It's been a little over a year since Daniel Craig's final Bond film was released and I shared my extensive thoughts on it in my respective recapping 007 episode split into two parts almost a year ago as well. But now, instead of sharing my opinion, I thought it would be fun to look back at some of the easter eggs and references that you may have missed in the movie. You see, much like Die Another Day referenced all Bond movies preceding it in honor of the 40 year anniversary, No Time To Die references all past Bond films in some shape or form too. This wasn't for the 60 year anniversary officially as it was released before that, but I guess you could say that this was the intention or maybe just because it was the 25th Bond film. Whatever the case, some of these references are clearly intentional, others may be completely unintentional and are quite far fetched. Of course, videos like these have been covered by other YouTubers such as the brilliant Pentax Productions who directly deserves credits for most references mentioned. You can find the link to his video in the description below, but I thought it would be a great idea to go through these references in chronological movie order and try and catch some references not previously mentioned yet and mostly the ones you may have overlooked. So without further ado, let's start with Dr. No. Being the first Bond film and with No Time to Die being closest to the 60 year anniversary, it got a lot of references. The dots appearing at the start of the opening titles of course were a really obvious nod to the opening of the film. But also, the scientist suits in the lab after the titles are a clear reference to the ones seen at the climax of Dr. No. And so were the pink radiation suits worn by Safin's goons, which were very similar to the ones decontaminating Bond and Honey. Also the 1957 Chevy in Cuba is a nod to the car that the fake driver uses to pick up Bond from the airport. The ceiling in Safin's villain lair also is a clear homage to Ken Adams' film set in Dr. No, causing fans at first to speculate that Safin was going to be a modern day incarnation of Dr. No himself. Nomi jokingly introduces herself as a diver, a reference to Honey Rider who was looking for shells. And lastly of course the movie taking place in Jamaica again is a nod to the film as well. Though probably this was mostly a nod to Ian Fleming himself in homage to Bond's spiritual home. From Russia with Love marks the other Bond film where a Bond girl returns from a previous movie. Though No Time to Die is the only Bond film to date where a leading Bond girl returns. Of course every Bond film using the DB5 always indirectly references Goldfinger, so No Time to Die isn't unique in that sense. But it is the first time since Goldfinger that the car was once again being used for a gadget laden car chase. Did you notice that the scuba diver in the opening titles is a blink it and you miss it reference to Thunderbolt? The floating raft that Bond finds himself in also is a clear reference to both Thunderbolt and You Only Live Twice. I was almost fully expecting a submarine to emerge from under Bond when I first saw this in cinema. And of course, Blofeld's scar is a clear homage to Blofeld's first full face appearance in the series. However, No Time to Die takes much more inspiration from the novel You Only Live Twice, with its poison garden being taken from the book, as well as Bond killing Blofeld, saying the same line as in the book. Die, Blofeld, die! On Her Majesty's Secret Service is one of the heaviest and obvious reference Bond films in No Time to Die, with Louis Armstrong's All the Time in the World playing in the pre-title sequence, as well as Bond saying the famous line. There's no hurry, you see. We have all the time in the world. We have all the time in the world. The opening titles also references the movie a lot with the hourglass, the clock and the trident, which also appears as the symbol showcasing Bond's location in the climax of the movie. 
But a much more subtle reference is the ski in the background of Bond's storage compartment. And of course I don't need to point out that the end of the movie also has the Louis Armstrong song. Paloma's dress seems very similar to the dress worn by Plenty O'Toole in Diamonds of Forever. Though this is where the similarities end as the characters are vastly different. Maybe more of a similarity to Diamonds of Forever is the scene where Obrachev sneakily switches the USB drive being very reminiscent of Bond switching the cassette tape. Nomi removing her wig may be a subtle reference to Agent Rosie Carver in Live and Let Die. There don't seem to be many obvious references to the man with the golden gun other than the fact that both main villains have their villain lair located on an island somewhere in Asia. Safin's villain lair seems to bear a striking resemblance to Stromberg's villain lair in The Spy Who Loved Me, as well as the inclusion of this line. We've really got to stop meeting like this. You know, Felix, we really need to stop meeting. Oh! I mean, Bond didn't get to finish that line, but it was still a reference to the same line, right? Anyway, much as the villain lairs bear a striking resemblance from The Spy Who Loved Me, the villain's scheme of wiping out humanity with a bioweapon seems to resemble the villain scheme of Hugo Drax in Moonraker. Bond visiting the grave of his loved one was first seen in For Your Eyes Only. Another clear reference is the fact that Bond avenges the death of an ally by brutally taking down a car. Though the execution is different, the homage definitely is apparent. Though not a direct reference to Octopussy per se, but the picture on the wall representing Robert Brown as M is definitely an easter egg and he first appeared in Octopussy. But No Time to Die and Octopussy both are unique films in which Bond pilots a plane designed by Q. There really doesn't seem to be an obvious reference to A Few to a Kill either, but I guess you could point out that these are the only two movies in which Bond visits the main Bond girl's family owned house. However, reportedly there is a more obscure easter egg in the Russian article describing Safin's background story that Madeline and Bond go through. Reportedly, if you translate the Russian article, it would mention a Dr. Zorin. A really, really subtle reference to A View to a Kill, but I'm very curious if this rumor is true. Bond's Aston Martin V8 of course is an obvious reference to Timothy Dalton's Aston Martin in The Living Daylights. Bond finding a bleeding Felix Leiter of course happened before in License to Kill. And the fact that Bond tries to avenge him in the movie is the entire plot of that film. While for Goldeneye I could point out that Judy Dance's M also appears on the wall, but Goldeneye seems to be referenced more with the DB5 driving along on a mountain coastline road. And the falling statues in the title sequence also seem to homage Goldeneye's title sequence. The Navy shooting the missiles from their vessels seems to resemble a similar moment in Tomorrow Never Dies. Likely very unintentional, but Bond throwing away his visitor card in the bin is similar to the cigar being thrown away in the bin in The World Is Not Enough. In general, Bond is throwing around a lot of stuff in Money Penny's office anyway, so this seems to be more of a general Bond trope. However, the reference to Die Another Day definitely was intentional and comes in the form of the Delectado cigar that he finds in his Jamaican pad referencing this moment from Die Another Day. I'm here to pick up some delictados. Delictados? Vesper, of course, is the obvious connection to Casino Royale with the Daniel Craig movies taking place in the same cinematic universe. But there's also Vesper's music playing over the graveyard sequence. At the same time, Felix's death seems to bear a striking resemblance to Vesper's death, both symbolically floating away from Bond's life. Both in Quantum of Solace and No Time to Die, Felix and Bond share a drink over in a bar. But I think an intentional reference is this very similar camera shot of Bond fighting and falling down. 
Nomi discusses events from Skyfall with Money Petty shooting Bond. Take the bloody shot! I get why you shot him. Yeah, well, everyone tries at least once. And also, the bulldog statue from Skyfall once again reappears as a nod to that movie. And of course, both in Skyfall and No Time to Die, Bond gets an Aston Martin out of a personal storage and drives it out of there in a very similar fashion. Lastly, with Spectre being the predecessor of No Time to Die, there are a lot of references, with Madeline foreshadowing the entire pre-title sequence in that film. A man once came to our house to kill my father. He didn't know I was upstairs playing in my bedroom. Well, that papa kept a bit a 9mm under the sink with the bleach. Also, Inspector Q mentions having two cats to feed. And in No Time to Die, we actually get to see those. As well as the Spectre Ring making a return appearance. Both films also showcase previous characters during their title sequences. So, that's how No Time to Die referenced all Bond movies. But, did you also know that in a way, No Time to Die referenced itself as early on as in the gun barrel? The fact that No Time to Die has the only gun barrel where there is no blood dripping down suggests a foreshadowing of the ending. Meaning this time, Bond doesn't hit his target, but the gun barrel hits him. It's just a fan theory of the fact that Bond doesn't survive the end of the film and this may or may not have been intentional. It could also simply have been an aesthetic creative choice to exclude the blood because the red wouldn't blend well with the icy setting at the start of the movie. Who knows? In any case, I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. Please like and subscribe and if you want to go the extra mile you can take a look at my Patreon page and enjoy various channel perks such as access to my community discord server, early access to my videos and much more fun bonuses. Thanks a lot for watching, see you guys in the next video.